Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan. Thank you once again for joining me for another interview with the awesome Brian Flynn of Super 7. Brian, thanks for being back, man. Thank you, Dan. It's <laughs> lovely to be here again. I'd like to thank all the maniacs out there. Oh my God. Come yes. Down here. <laughs> <laughs> it's I can't even do, I, I started to cut a promo and I couldn't even go with it. Couldn't even get, get yeah, that's all you got? <laughs> you know what? I leave that to the professionals. All right. Well, there you go. Well, hey, I can, I can lead you along because we have a lot of things to talk about, I think. I've got a lot <laughs> of questions to ask you. So hopefully you've got some answers for us. You, you and everyone else. But yes, <laughs> I do. Well, it's, uh, it's been a while since we've last spoke, but uh, back then you kind of hinted at a lot of big things that were coming from Super 7. And yes, this we hinted week, about a Thunder Tank, what, a year ago? Yeah, yeah. It's been about a year at this point, it feels like. Maybe a little shy of that, but um, yeah, I think definitely starting around last Toy Fair, we started talking about yeah, that. Yeah, it would have been thing. March or April, right? Uh-huh. I think it was. Yeah. I think it was. And uh, now here you are, like you, you've been dropping reveals all week long, but of course, one of the biggest. Sunday, yes, today was the, it was the seven days of Super 7. Yeah. And then one of the biggest of those reveals, of course, being the Thunder Tank for the Thundercats Ultimates line. So I thought it would be really cool if we could just invest some time talking about the Thunder Tank. And Completely. I think you've even got it there to show us, right? It's true. It's true. I will. It's, it's a messy, it's messy here, but here. There we go. We've got, oh. a, we've got a thunder tank down there, which, oh, we can, yeah. which we can, we can talk about and I can figure out how we're going to do this or whatever. It's the same snake mountain in the background that it was there before. So. <laughs> well, and we've all got that now. So, uh, you know, now we're interested yeah, in yeah. thing we don't have. Yeah. <laughs> so the Thundercats Ultimates line uh, has yes. been rolling right along with new releases. And of course, ever since it started, the Thunder Tank is one of those things fans have been asking you for, right? Yes. Yes, they have been. Uh, rolling right along is a little nebulous, you know, wave one and wave two are a little bit uh, you know, wave one is out. It's fine. Wave two is delayed immensely, which is driving us all crazy. Wave three test shots are out. Wave four, I'm supposed to see test shots any day now uh, before Chinese New Year. And wave three and wave four will most likely deliver before wave two, which is the craziest part about. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> wave, wave three and wave four are moving along just fine. Wave two is stuck in factory hell. But, oh man. Oh man. But we're make we're gonna get it, gonna get it out there. So but. that's good. That's good. And in the past you've kind of talked about too how you don't like to show off new figures or start pre-orders until you start getting some of these waves in hand. So uh maybe if wave three and four end up showing up before two, do you think that'll be about the time you'll start showing some new stuff, or do you want to wait until that wave two gets through? Um I mean, quite honestly, it'll probably happen wave three, four, two in rapid succession. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, wave five has been ready for quite some time, but we're not doing wave five yet. We're, we're doing Thundercat tank right now because that's what everybody keeps asking about. And that's what everybody keeps talking about. And so rather than moving into wave five, we're moving into Thunder Tank. And then uh, hopefully we'll get some figures delivered. And then we'll go into wave five after that. Very cool. Very cool. And one of the other things too, with uh, the wave one figures, I know that there were some accessories and some parts that you guys were going to have the corrected uh, paint painted uh, pieces for, right? Yeah. They've already, they've already landed in Europe. Uh, I thought I ours, saw that. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Yeah. Ours are at the port still. They've been at the port for like two weeks. I've got the advanced pieces here. Here, hold on. Let me open up my box within a box within a box here. Trying to, we've got our Thundercats box and then the booster pack and then here are all the parts. So theoretically, theoretically, uh, they're supposed to be, they were supposed to be delivered Monday, but now they're telling me they're delivering them uh, tomorrow. So if they deliver to the warehouse tomorrow, we start shipping them on Monday. So oh, for everyone watching, today is Friday, January 29th. So they're supposed to deliver on the 30th. So that's 
30 days, has 31. So the 1st of February, we should start shipping them out. You've got your little instruction sheet on how to replace your parts and all your, your parts and your pieces parts and get your parts. So yes, the parts are here and ready to go. Excellent. That is very cool. And, and I, I just think it's awesome that you guys are doing that too. And I know you've done that in the past with even some of the stuff with Masters of the Universe and everything, but I think it's a really cool gesture to just send those for free to the people that ordered it, ordered the figures, and that way we can replace the parts and the accessories if we want to. And you get an extra head. Yeah, that's awesome. There you go. So That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, the goal is to make it right and to make it perfect. And uh, when something goes awry, especially when it's not planned to, and it, um, it's trickier, you know, when you can't go to the factory, uh, we need to fix it. So we're fixing it and sending out a whole bunch of parts to a whole bunch of people. So hopefully a whole bunch of people will be very excited about them. You know, and that's a, that's a really good point that you just made too, that I don't think a lot of people think about. Like the fact that you can't visit the factory right now with the current times that we're in and everything. How has that complicated things? Oh, it complicates things immensely. And I mean, and, and the harder part or the part that hasn't come to bear yet. So a year ago when we were talking about this, we were like, hey, look, COVID's been bothering us, you know, for months in China. And it was just starting to rear its head in the States. But we've been dealing with lockdowns and factory shutdowns for months. So in a case like right now, all of us are dealing with the exact same thing. They, you know, just like everybody went into lockdown here, going in, you know, and everybody was saying, hey, Christmas is coming up, holidays are coming up, please don't travel, don't go with your family. Well, Chinese New Year is literally at, the, at this video is like days away. Well, they're... China's doing the exact same thing, which is, oh, we don't want you to travel from, you know, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Guangdong, all these places to these far-flung provinces where you may be from. We're going to spread the virus like crazy. So literally like weeks and weeks ago, three and four weeks ago, people started traveling then and leaving the factories early, like a month early, so they didn't get caught in sort of a lockdown. So yeah. they've been locking down provinces being no more travel to these provinces. So the factories have already been under understaffed by like 50% for over a month leading into Chinese New Year. Oh, wow. And all of our factories are telling us we expect it to be at least one, if not two months after Chinese New Year before staff is back to 100% because of how long it takes for everybody to come back again. At the ports, the ports, I mean, you can read all this stuff if you were to read trade publications about shipping out of China. I mean, it, right now it takes two to three weeks just to book cargo onto a ship. That's not even get it on the ship. Like normally you can book cargo and it's three to four days to get on a ship. Right now it's three weeks just to book the cargo, six wow. weeks to make it on the boat everything is impacted everything is slowing down every and it's gonna happen again yeah so it it's it's interesting to see like where everybody's just like you know it it's february what's going on it's like no in other parts of the world nothing is happening absolutely nothing is happening yeah it's, it's pretty crazy, you know? And then of course, we just got off the holiday season here where we dealt with all of the, the uh, domestic shipping delays and stuff like that. So it's really just kind of, it's all over the place, right? It's really being impacted everywhere. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's insane. Uh, and it doesn't appear to be going anywhere. There's also crazy, crazy um, material charges that are jumping up. Oh, especially no. um, things like vi vinyls and other things like that. Those materials, because everybody's making gloves and PPE out of them. Oh, so yeah. Make, so you don't have the raw material to make other things, which is an interesting sort of thing that will come to bear in time. But wow. we've digressed. We've digressed. <laughs> yeah. We're here to talk about Thunder Tank. Well, that's cool. Let's do it. Let's dive into it. So you guys just announced that the pre-order is opening up and it's a two month pre-order period, right? Yeah. Cause you know, it's an expensive item. So we try to give people a longer lead time to get in on it. Uh, you know, 
Sometimes it takes people longer to decide they have the revenue, to decide that they're going to have the revenue uh, to buy it. Or just, you know, it's just, it's a big thing. It's not a decision that you take lightly per se. So uh, it's a two month open pre-order. We've got a payment plan uh, that's associated with it. The price is $450 plus $40 flat shipping domestic. If you're dealing with one of our international partners, they will determine what the shipping is on their end. Okay. Great. And it, yeah, and you're offering the payment plan. Um, yeah. So any of us that went through the Snake Mountain thing, it's very similar to that. Um, yes. But it, so it's really cool that you've got the option to do that. You've got the two month open window there. Is this also a similar situation where you have to meet a certain number of orders? Otherwise, it doesn't get produced? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, you know, with Snake Mountain, we were very, very nervous about getting there. And obviously, we got there. I feel much more confident in having gone through the Snake Mountain experience and for delivering Snake Mountain to the, the you know, I, I feel like if you're a collector that bought Snake Mountain, 75% of those people are also sort of collecting the Thundercats line. So I feel pretty good that that person is going to be like, oh yeah, I'm totally down for Thunder Tank. <laughs> so I've been less sort of like, got to get those orders in or it's not going to happen. I feel confident that we're going to get there but yeah if all of a sudden it's just like yeah nobody's buying it then it won't happen <laughs> okay well it's good to know it's good to know so if you guys are thinking about it yeah <laughs> you got to order it otherwise it's not going to happen so let's talk about that price point a little bit because i know it's it's one of those things too where you know people see a high price point like that sometimes it could be sticker shock so can you maybe explain oh, what there was, goes there was in? Plenty of sticker shock yesterday. Exactly, exactly. So can you maybe explain or kind of break down a little bit what what constitutes that price point on an item like this? Yeah, I mean, really, the, the first and foremost, the most expensive thing to manufacture any of these things is the tooling cost or the molds that you have to do to make it. So, you know, if if you're making a little piece of plastic about this big, your mold is going to be about this big. Um, and in vehicles, you have tons of little parts all over the place. You know, things that connect to the wheels and this and that and the other. There's a million little pieces. Where like a playset, it's here's a shell, here's a shelf, here's a bone throw. Good. You know, it's it's pretty straightforward. And and a lot of playsets are sort of sculpted really on one side and allow the secondary side to be just drafted off and everything else like that. When you're talking about vehicles, you have to mold the inside, you have to mold the outside, you have to mold all the parts, you have to mold all the support structures. They're just infinitely more complicated than play sets, any play sets. And if you really look back, even through your childhood, uh, in a lot of cases, G.I. Joe being the main exception to this rule, there weren't a whole lot of vehicles compared to how many play sets. And if you look at modern toy lines, no one hardly ever makes vehicles. And if they make vehicle, they'll make like the one signature car and call it a day. Vehicles are ridiculously expensive to make. And that's why people don't make them. So in as much while Snake Mountain has this towering height, it's still in a lot of ways a fairly empty form. So you've got big tools, but you have one. And while Thunder Tank is a little bit smaller, if you, you know, uh, it's, it's, okay, well, I've got an outside tool, an inside tool, a support piece tool, I've got all the other, and so when you add up all the tooling, there's actually almost as much tooling in the Thunder Tank as there was in the entirety of Snake Mountain. And so, that you know you sort of have two things you have okay all the tooling so i'm going to use easy numbers i did this on instagram the other night if tooling was a hundred thousand dollars for this it's more than that far more than that but if it was a hundred thousand dollars and i made ten thousand pieces my cost per unit just for tooling is ten dollars which is fine but if i my cost for tooling is a hundred thousand dollars and I make 25,000 pieces, it's $4 a unit. If I make uh, tooling is $100,000 and I make 50,000 units, it's $2 per unit. And, and that's 
that's the core issue. When you're dealing with something like this, where we're only looking at making a few thousand pieces total, and you're starting to say, okay, well, tooling might be $350,000, $450,000, and you divide that tooling cost by only a couple thousand pieces, it, the majority of the money to make this is actually the molds, it's not even the plastic that you're shooting to make the molds. So, you know, there was an interesting story. Somebody was complaining yesterday that the Razor Crest was bigger than this. And the Razor Crest really isn't much bigger than this at all. The Razor Crest was $350 and they sold 28,000 of them on Hazmat. 28,000 of them. And that's not even counting how many they sold to Big Bad and Entertainment Earth or Amazon or anybody else. So they sold 28,000 of those at, 30, at $350. That is Star Wars. If you think Star Wars, then count how many people you know collect Thundercats. It's like, okay, take that number and cut it by 10%, 5%. You know, there's, it's just, they're not the same economics. And yet that $350 Razor Crest is like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But my $450 Thunder Tank, that's outrageous. And it's like, actually, that's as cheap as we could make it. It's, I mean, that's a super good point too. And, you know, and as much as we love Thundercats and we know that there's a great fan base for Thundercats, I mean, you are, it is like apples and oranges, right? Star Wars is bigger. It's carrying that bigger brand name. It's got, you know, think about how big the Mandalorian was. And then think about the people that are talking about Thundercats, you know, in comparison, it's just, it's, it's, I, I understand why you can look at these things and say, well, they're like this, they're the same size. Why don't they cost the same? But it, it really does boil down to how many of those are going to sell in comparison. And it is going to be smaller yeah. numbers, right? It's like, going to be. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, if I sell 28,000 Thunder Tanks, I will gladly sell it to you for $350. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if, I sell $28, if I sell 28,000 pieces of Thunder Tank, I will, I will just assume that we've been game stopped by, uh, <laughs> by, by Reddit. There it is. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, it, it's the same thing that, you know, I, there's a lot of people and, you know, and it's not incorrect logic, but it doesn't actually stand up to data. You know, all these people are like, everybody I know collects Thundercats. You put it in front of them, they love it. And it's like, yeah, everybody you know, but I can tell you as the person that physically sells them, who collects all the orders and manufacturing, I know exactly how many people are buying Thundercats toys. And it is a very small amount of people compared to what you think it is. And it's like, well, I go onto this forum and there's 350 other people that are talking about it all the time. And it's like, yeah, that's right. There are 350 other people talking to you about them. And Which in the grand scheme of things isn't uh, like those aren't but, big But when numbers, you're talking right? about manufacturing, yeah, that exactly, in a, a, a tiny, tiny, tiny run. Well, like, like for can't. for example, maybe like I don't know if you would know, but could you like give a good guesstimate? Like an item that is made for retail shelves, like how many? How many? If like there's a vehicle for a toy line made for retail shelves, how many of those would they produce for retail? What's a number on that? Do you think? I. I I don't know on okay. vehicles per se, but if you're talking about things like, you know, um, you know, like wrestling figures, mm -hmm. for example, uh, I am under the impression, I don't have the exact numbers because I don't right. work for the We're hypothetically here. speaking here. Hypothetically <laughs> speaking, the stuff that you see on shelf at Walmart, I am under the impression that like initial orders start at 50,000 units. Okay. And then you start getting into 75 and 100,000 units on some of those items. Right. And that's the order from Walmart, not the order from Target, not the order from FAO or, you know, you start aggregating them together. So, I mean, you could argue very easily that, you know, one of those characters for some of those key licenses, are, you know, are selling 100,000 plus units. I know, I know with some of the Funko Pops, they were selling hundred to 200,000 units per piece. Wow. You know, wow. And, and the economy of scale that comes with that um, obviously drives down prices. 
So if you're not on those shelves, like you're not selling, you're selling small fractions of those kind of units, at which point your cost per unit goes up immensely. Right. Right. Okay. So, and then we're on I mean, a tangent now, aren't we? No. Well, I mean, you know, this is really interesting to me. So, I hope other people find this interesting too. Like this stuff's this stuff has always been very interesting to me. And I try well, to I, I, I try to explain sorry. it when people you know are asking about prices because I know that these smaller niche collector lines that are sold direct to consumer over the internet that aren't at retail that has a role in why the prices are a little bit higher. And it's, it's hard sometimes. And I totally understand it as a consumer when you just want to, you can walk into a store and pay $20 for a figure. Well, why is it $40 on the internet? And it's, you know, so that's, I, I, I like this information. And I like putting this information out there. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 there, there are multiple sort of misnomers that toy collectors have, which is, you know, like this stuff costs pennies to make in China. First off, China is, you know, rapidly, is, if it, is it not the second biggest economy in the world at this point? You know, or the biggest, you know, it's getting to be there. Their country is very quickly moving from manufacturing to um, more of a white collar uh, country. Manufacturing and material prices go up every year. So I've already gotten my new prices come Chinese New Year. You can expect, much like inflation goes up 3 or 4% a year against the dollar here in the States, you can guarantee that every year you come back from Chinese New Year, every material labor cost you have is going up by 10% every year. Wow. You wow. know, just because yeah. that's the way it goes. And then if something happens like shortages or runs on raw materials, then it goes up again as well. Uh, you know, for us, we see all the Chinese factories moving their factories now into other countries to get cheaper labor and cheaper production. Uh, China, in 10 years from now, you will see nowhere, you'll see half as much stuff made in China. 20 years from now, 10% of what is made in China now will still be made in China. Like huh. China is actively moving out of the manufacturing uh, business. And uh, finding people to work at factories is very difficult. Like, you know, because they can have better jobs and they want better jobs. Um, so all, all of this plays into it. It's just like, well, I remember when that toy was $7.99. Okay, well, I do too, but that was also 2008. Yeah. And that was 13 years ago. And that, you know, that doesn't, you know, change. But, I, you know, there's that. There's just a host of this. I mean, the reality is what's more interesting really is the fact that, you know, we, we are beneficiaries of this as Super 7 is that manufacturing has gotten to a point where it is economically feasible to make small runs of toys. That's, wow. that's the core difference. Yeah, that's, that's is, good. I mean, it makes sense too that why we're being able to get all the stuff we're getting right now. So that's cool. 10 years ago, you wouldn't have been able to do this. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be able to make the kinds of toys that we're making now 10 years ago. And in the size runs that we're doing uh, with the level of quality that we're doing. Um, so it, it's an interesting time and you're seeing sort of uh, an explosion across multiple manufacturers of all sorts of people all of a sudden starting to make figures of every shape and, and stripe. And that's because there is, the barrier to entry is not as high as it used to be financially. You know, um, I mean, you go back and look at all the stuff in the 50s or 60s, if you will, literally it was like, you know, they're pouring millions of dollars into tooling to hope something works. Now, as much as we're complaining about it, you know, if you were trying to build this vehicle, you know, Kenner was trying to build that vehicle, they would have spent five or 10 million in those years money trying to develop something like this. And for us, you know, tooling is going to be, you know, $450,000, $500,000. Hmm. You know? Wow. It's not, it's, it's way cheaper. I, I, we had a conversation once with the guy that owns a, uh, 
a bunch of the old weirdos model kit molds. He has all the original molds from the 60s. And he was like, I paid a million dollars for these molds in like 1983. Wow. And, like, and that was a deal. He bought them on the cheap because that's what it costs to make molds. Like you just, you know, just getting into the game was impossible. And we're yeah. like, I mean, those molds are essentially worthless now. In not, not, not in a negative way, like I love weirdos, but nobody really buys or makes model kits. Right, exactly. There's no one that retails model kits. Yeah. And the IP is old, and you could remake that tooling for a fraction of the cost now. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. So it, it, it is, it's interesting that we're, now able to legitimately manufacture the stuff that we wouldn't have been able to a certain number of years ago. Um, at the same time, that boutique level of manufacturing comes with a sort of boutique level pricing because mm -hmm. the forehand to overcome that tooling cost, if you're talking about something that might cost $5 million to tool, you've got to sell hundreds of thousands of them. You know, and that's why, you know, you could buy an X-Wing for 10 years. You know? Right. You could buy it in the Star Wars package, in the Empire package, Power of the Force package. We're going to keep, I mean, Jedi package. We're going to keep selling it forever. They're still using that tooling now. Like, you know, you that's what you had to do. Like, that's all there was. But there also was when you went to the toy store, here's the five lines of toys you have to choose from. I yeah. Hope you like them. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Where right now, I mean, as well, we're, we're on a tangent, like just with this week with all the announcements, like we're really getting to go deep into every crazy nook and cranny of all these licenses that we wanted to make forever and people are letting us do it. I mean, it's sort of like the greatest time to be a collector. It's also overwhelming. But agreed. Yeah. On both of those, it's a great time because there's so many options, but it gets overwhelming. It does get expensive because you don't know where to go. You don't know where to spend your money. <laughs> you, you have to pick and choose. And for all yeah. of us that have been collecting this stuff for 30 years, you know, I, I remember when the nineties star Wars figures came out and the whole mm -hmm. time leading up to that, you're like, if they ever make star Wars figures again, I'm going to buy every single one. I was they just about buff. Luke. Yeah. All buff. Like, yeah. I don't I care. It's a star Wars figure. Woohoo. All we had were the bendums right before those yeah. came out. <laughs> and you no, know, but here we are, you know, 25 years later and they haven't stopped. Yeah, They're exactly. Like, oh, okay. Maybe, maybe don't need buff Luke. <laughs> Maybe I can pick and choose, you know, do I want, you know, vintage collection? Do I want three and three quarter? Do I want uh, ultimates? Do I want a, bl a black series? Like you can pick your line of stuff. I don't just collect Star Wars figures. I just collect this line of Star Wars figures, or I don't collect just this line. You know, you, there's multiple lines, multiple franchises, multiple articulation plans, like anything and everything you ever wanted is coming. Well, I'm, I'm pretty into the idea of uh, Super 7 doing an ultimate Star Wars line now where there's seven inch uh, buffed out Luke Skywalker and, and, you know, paying homage to that Power of the Force line. So let's, let's get on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably Hasbro be the only one that like wants me. to buy them. <laughs> Hasbro may like me. They don't like me that they much. Don't... <laughs> nice. They don't like anybody that much. That's fine. You can go make some of those, you know, oh, you want to make Power Rangers and Transformers? That's great. Hey, can we make Star Wars? Don't you talk back. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, no, like, no. <laughs> I think you need to remember your place in this relationship. <laughs> yes, sir. All yeah. right. Well, all right. this is Should this we get back been, to Thunder Tank? Yeah, I was going to say, this has all been awesome, and I hope it's been interesting <laughs> for people, but I don't want to lose everybody, too, because I know they want to see the Thunder Tank. So They're like, it's let's... 40 minutes in. We haven't even... <laughs> I'm going to turn this around so I can, I can talk from the other side and we can sort of look at Thunder Tank. All right, look at that. So, uh, let's see what we can see here. We can see all that. It's very foreshortened. Um, I try to do it this way, maybe. Maybe not. I'm going to have to do it this way for the moment. I love but the this was LJN one of the things one. we were talking about the other day. So here's your LJN. The LJN is like one 
two, three, four, and then some space behind it, some space above it. It's like, this thing is so much bigger than the LJN by, by a factor. It's just kind of crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, just looking at the scene of those things side by side, it's unbelievable. Just the size on that thing. How uh, do you have the measurements handy, like on the new one, what they are? Uh, the new one, I thought we posted that up. I'm sure uh, you did, yeah. But anyways, all right, let's see if I can do it better. I'm trying to move this properly here. The new one, I believe this one is 27 inches long. It's 11 or 12 inches wide. And then I think it's nine inches tall. And how heavy is it going to be? Pretty heavy. I got some weight to it. I, this one's made out of resin. This is the prototype. Oh yeah. Know? So that one's heavy. So, <laughs> this one's very heavy. Um, let's see. What things are people asking about? Obviously, they want to know if the gun and everything is removable. And yes, it will be. Here, so you can take that out. And this pops in. This version doesn't because it's prototype, but uh, that pops out so you have plenty of room inside the tank itself. Uh, you know, I don't know if we can see these things over here, you know, but uh, here I'll pop this part off. But like, yeah, you'll be, you know, you'll be able to do the whole, be able to open the arms up and everything. <sighs> This is so hard to be able to talk and then move the camera here at the same time. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> um, you know, there's Jackalman's hanging out there because Panthro and Lion are left. You've got the gun underneath the cannon that will open and close. The mouth opens, arms open. You can fit both guys in here. All four can fit in the back. Fit in the back. Uh, the tops will have both covers. So you've got the, the solid cover. Can you see it? I can see it. It looks awesome. Solid cover. This one's obviously cast, so it's not perfectly clear, but you'll have the clear cover as well. So you'll be able to have both covers. That's amazing. Um, let's see here. Uh, peeking inside. You know, you see, like, if we're talking about that, like, you see all the detail on the wall, the inside walls? Yeah. Of the, think about that. So if you're talking about tooling once again, because all that's sculpted and molding, you have to have one tool for the outside and another tool for the inside. So those are two separate parts. So I'm making the shell of the Thunder Tank twice, not once. Oh, does that wow. make sense? It does make sense. Yeah, totally. And, and so, so all those all those parts inside they're sculpted. There's no stickers or anything like that, and they're all going to be painted and and looking all nice. Sculpted, painted. There's handles and emblems and buttons and all sorts of stuff. So cool. And are the the wheels and the treads all going to roll and move? Yes, all the wheels will roll. The tread will roll. The whole thing. And we're making it. We're trying to make it a nice. What we're trying to do with it is it's. You know the old ones were kind of this rubbery thing. We're going to do more of a softer durometer. Uh, vinyl plastic so it doesn't break down and crack and then I'll be actually be able to move around everything so the wheels all work uh, it rolls let's see the eyes around the front are glow in the dark awesome so awesome cool. um, what else should we talk about can we like can we see anything Huh? Yeah, so you got the seats in the back. Can you show us like a figure sitting kind of in the back on some of those seats so we can see what that looks like? The, mm, I'm not sitting him down completely correctly, but and this one, this mock-up uh, is was half an inch too short. So it's actually half an inch taller and half an inch deeper. So he kind of fits in there right now the newest version of it is actually half an inch taller and half an inch deeper. So he sits in there with the ease. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So are they gonna be able to sit in there and like the top can be on it while they're sitting or is it gonna be? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool, very so cool. 
they'll they'll be in there and there'll be more than enough room between them and the seat in front of them for them to sit comfortably more than enough room with that yeah they'll they'll fit in the whole thing then you have that's awesome you know a little bit of that uh so we've got the four seats in the back, the two in the front. So that means we can have six figures sitting in there. Yes. But it still looks like there's other, like there's lots of room in that back area. So you could probably. Yeah, especially if you take out the gun. Yeah. So if we, hold on. We had to actually match the floor to the cartoon. So yeah, if you take out the gun, there's a ton of space. That's amazing. And that's, a, that's another good point too. So this is inspired by the way it appeared in the animation, not necessarily the vintage toy, right? Cause I know. Yeah. And I, yeah, same thing. All that sculpted and raised detail, everything. That's amazing. Yeah. Look at those control panels up there in the front and everything. Gosh, it looks so cool. Yeah. All this, you've got the little, uh, you've got the time to go. Um, I have no idea because I'm standing behind here if it's actually showing the inside. It's showing. Yeah, we can see it. We can see it. It looks good. That is yeah. so cool. Um, let's see. What other exciting views can I show you? Yeah, I just like, I just like seeing it. And I think a lot of people are going to like seeing it too. That's <laughs> Every time well, I talk, it, it puts my face on the screen. So I'm trying to be quiet and let you uh, show it off. <laughs> The hard, the hard part is obviously is that it's the resin master and it's, you know, you make all the parts and then you sort of glue and put them all together to get it as this is the master. And then I can't pick it up. It's like, okay, that weighs 40 pounds. Oh yeah. And yeah. I can't be like, oh yeah, take a look at this and let me move around this. And of course, uh, I can, but I, I imagine part. you guys, yeah, there and, you go. And say, oh, look, you know, you got the little painting on there. It's got all the buttons, the handles. It's very exciting, you know. Um, if we're talking great. about well, I and I imagine too, you guys will be doing updates along the way, kind of like you've done with Snake Mountain and stuff like that. And and as you get, you know, a little further down the road in the progress, we can see other samples and stuff too, where you can pick it up and show it off. Exactly. I mean, I know that because uh, I think it launches Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, when it launches, we're gonna we have a a three D uh, video where it spins and then it blows apart to show you all the parts that are inside it and comes back together. Cool. Because like I said, there's, there's a lot of parts, like each one of those parts underneath the treads, you know, there's, there's so many parts in this thing. And you started, you started to show us the, uh, the little top part there. Like that's two separate pieces over the back, right? Yeah. 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 So, you know, the hinged, um, let me, so, yeah, this is the, yeah. That's cool. Will that like clip into place on the vehicle or does it just kind of rest on top? Uh, no, it clicks in, um, you know, you can see sort of, you know, your traditional, if you will, sort of. Ah, okay. I see. So it'll kind of fold open. It looks like yeah, it kind of, got well. it. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. So how about like packaging? Have you guys thought about how you're going to box that up and, and, and like the reveal for and packaging, stuff like that? Yeah. The reveal for packaging happens what, Monday or maybe this weekend. Oh, okay. Very cool. So probably yeah, box is done. Box art's done. Oh, it's done. Okay. Done. Well, depending on when I get this posted, then if it's not in this video, you guys will have to stay tuned so that you can see that. I'm excited to see that. Yeah, I mean, uh, unlike Snake Mountain with this one, I mean, this one is completely done, ready to go. It's just, we can't start tooling until we start selling and knowing people are buying it. Exactly. Sort of everything, you know, it's like, okay, let's fund it and go, but everything else, it's ready to go. So it should happen actually much, much faster than Snake Mountain did. Oh, very cool. That is very cool. Yeah, and it's it's the same, and we're having the exact same people that make Snake Mountain make that make this one so that it comes out because it's gotta come out perfect. So they're prepared, they know what they're getting into. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, there was there was a lot of that. I mean, and quite frankly, I think so far with Snake Mountain, we really you know, there's a couple spare parts like, oh my chain broke or this. We've really only had 
as far as I know, like one actual, like one that was assembled wrong or came back. Oh, weird. okay. Well, that's all good. Big mountains, only one legitimate, like, oh, that one's jacked, you know, and that was it. So. Well, I love my Snake Mountain. It turned out great. So I'm, I'm pretty amped to see how the Thunder Tank progresses and, and turns out in the end. Do you guys have like a, an estimated delivery date on that? Uh, we're saying early 22 because basically okay. uh, it's always funny because people are like, oh, it's going to be four years. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> we deserve a little bit of that. Uh, but I mean, basically toy development time for us is a year, whether it's a reaction figure or a Thunder Tank. You know, Thunder Tank's a little longer. We've been working on this for quite a while. But once you get it going, it's, it's about 12 months. So, you know, we're going to get this going, if you will, in March or April, and it should deliver, you know, January, February of next year. Awesome. You know, it, it should leave before Chinese New Year without too much issue. But I, I can't sit here and be like, oh, yeah, it'll be ready before Christmas because it's it's big and it's complicated and we need to take the time to make sure it's right 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 so. cool cool all right so everybody's tuning into this video and just watching my face now and realizing that this was not the video they had hoped for. <laughs> well, it's like, well, how do i get a picture of this tank and then it's like i propped the laptop up and it's like it's on the side all i can see is the tread <laughs> yeah, we, you actually got some really good shots in there, I think. So I, I'm, I'm happy with it. And like, like you just said, like, we'll, we'll see more of this as the process is going along too. Yeah. So that's really cool. I, I think I, you know, I posted this on, on Instagram, but it, you know, it's sort of worth noting for everybody just to really, this sort yeah. of really sort of shows the scale as like, all right, I realize, you know, it's a little loosey goosey, but this is the vintage LJN. Here is the arm for this one. <laughs> The arm is that big. Like the scale of this tank is so big. It's crazy. It's not as big as Snake Mountain. No. But for a vehicle, it's It's, it's huge, awesome. right? I mean, and it's appropriately scaled to seat six, seven inch action figures. I mean, that's a yes. big toy. Yes, it's a big <laughs> toy. And it's, uh, it, it's fun and it's cool and people are either going to, I think people are going to love it, but at the same time, we are very aware, aware that it's a, much like Snake Mountain was, it's a ridiculous thing. There's a <laughs> reason people don't do this. Well, it's another or one of those things. For, yeah. Gonna... Even for Hasbro, it's like, we're not going to make that. We're going to see if you'll buy it first. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it's just another one of those things I can add to the list of things I never thought I'd see. You know, like I never thought we'd get a new Castle Grayskull and then a new Snake Mountain. I never thought we'd see a Thunder Tank. And here we are. It's awesome. I, and, and the funny part about this is we could probably turn the Wayback Machine on to a year and a half ago. And all it was was Thundercats will never get made again. No one will do yep. anything. Yep, that was the talk. That was the talk. And here we are. Making making Thunder Tank, making crazy. Because you know, and then the funny part is that half the people are like, it's too much, I can't do it. And half the people are like, that's awesome. Where's Cat's Lair? Like, <laughs> exactly, right? You announce one big thing and they're immediately on to the next. <laughs> I know. Fine. I want to know where the cat's lair is too. We gotta get both of these things. <laughs> You're slacking. Come on. Get on it, Brian. Jeez. Yeah. It's like, awesome. Okay. So Thunder Tank pre-order is open for two months. Yes. Um, so that is until the end of March, right? So it's all February, all of March? Yes. February and March. Okay. Correct. And Warner for all of our international friends, we're trying to set it up this time to where there's always, you know, somebody that you're buying from internationally. There's a Canadian person. There's a Mexican person. There's a South American person. There's an English person, there's a European person, there's Very an Australian cool. person, there's a China person. So that, you know, if you're buying locally, you buy from them. You're not having to buy it from us and then ship it and deal with VAT and everything. You should be able to buy it in your region. So that's awesome. Excellent. All right. So shout out to the folks around the world supporting the Thunder Tank. Heck yeah.
<laughs> super super seven.com's the place 450 dollars. get your order in if this is something you want to see made right yes yes and um and and thanks to everyone that is excited about it thanks to the people that are politely not excited about it and uh, <laughs> i will continue to hopefully try to win the hearts and minds of those people that don't understand what and why this is what it is um and maybe I won't. And that's, that's okay. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is, right? I mean, you're not, you're not going to win everybody over, but I think there are a lot of people who are very excited for this. And I think that's, you know, I, I think it's I, cool that it's happening. Yes. It's super cool that it's happening. I'm super excited about it. It's amazing. I think it's just, you know, I try to be as transparent as I can. Oh yeah, of course. But if it was easy to make things like this, people would be making them all the time. And there's a reason you never see them, you know, and I'm not going to go into other, other companies or other anything, but it's like, go, go back and look at some of the lines you collect. And then in, in the past five, 10 years, and then go and see how many vehicles they made to go with that line. And you will find almost none. And then you might be able to find play sets because play sets are a little easier to do. But for the most part, nobody's making anything that's a vehicle, you know? Right. So uh, it's the vehicles, vehicles are a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate you giving us kind of the insight on all that stuff and showing off the Thunder Tank. I think there's a lot of really great information here. So hopefully that helps to kind of put that knowledge out there and spread the word on the Thunder Tank and, and all that stuff. So we appreciate yeah, it, man. And- and, and, you know, if people have other questions, I'm happy to answer. And uh, hopefully uh, everybody will be, hopefully enough people are as excited about it as we are. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> All right, Brian. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to kind of go into this extra detail and show us some of the stuff on this early Thunder Tank prototype. I think we are all very excited for it. I'm, I'm very excited. And thank you to all the people that have been supporting Super 7 before the thunder tank and after the thunder tank it's it that's that's the reason we get to make all this cool stuff so thank you to everyone listening and uh let's just keep making great fun toys excellent all right guys well hey stay tuned because i'm going to be talking to brian again about all of the other big reveals coming out of super seven they've done a lot of amazing stuff and i've got a lot of questions to ask so make sure you guys stay tuned here to the channel for another video coming up very soon thank you guys so much for watching and until next time <laughs>